noise hop. Let's talk about a little something called noise hop. As most of you know, the birth of hip hop can be traced back to the Bronx in the late 60s and early 70s. But what many of you might not know is that during the early golden age of hip hop, with artists like A Tribe Called Quest, Rakim, and Wu Tang Clan, a new subgenre of hip hop was being born. This was Noise Hop. Many attribute the birth of Noise Hop to actually one of the least likely people. Mark Stewart from the Bristol post punk band The Pop Group. Apparently, the story goes that one day Mark was listening to Kiss FM while DJ Red Alert was on air performing his chaotic scratching, along with Africa Bombada's newly released Death Mix, all while driving past various construction sites. He blended all of these sounds together in 1985 in his second solo album, as the veneer of democracy starts to fade, in what was initially referred to as industrial hip-hop. It wasn't until a rap group like Public Enemy, with producer Hank Shock Lee at the helm, that would take that sound, evolve it, and innovate it, which would shake the foundations of hip hop. With vice, I hold the mic to vice, the black force, I keep it away, of course, and I'm keeping, keeping you from sleeping, sleeping, and on the stage I rage and I'm rolling. rolling. When you're listening to an R&B record, the, the main thing is to keep as much distortion out the record as possible. Now, in the metal genre, it's the idea is add as much distortion as you could possibly can. So now taking those two and kind of like mashing them together, but at the same time, I wanted to prove that you didn't need guitars in order to come up with a rock and roll sound. Now, in today's hip hop, the art of sampling is as central a part of the culture as ever. Going back to artists like Notorious B.I.G. or Dr. Dre, these artists utilize sampling to bring pieces of music past and present into their own beats and sounds. However, during the late 80s to early 90s, producers like DJ Premier and Jay Dilla began to take smaller samples from records rather than the typical loops in order to evade perpetual copyright lawsuits, thus allowing them to tap out the sounds on their MPC or keyboards, starting a trend towards choppier rhythms and messier sounds. And now for my next number, I'd like to return to the, to the, to the classic. Oh, oh. In this light, producer LP, now a member of Run the Jewels, stands out as perpetuating the sound as a real noise rebel in the early 2000s. Such with rust and clutch, spun out of the dust and careen into the temples of automated strut. Nanotech plugs in a plug and unplug. Another group that carried the torch of noise hop was Dalek, particularly in their 2002 debut full-length album from the filthy tongue of gods and griots, where Dalek, along with other horrorcore, hardcore, and noise hop artists, witnessed a sort of resurgence in their sound within the dark and somber world of post-9-11. So, in the space of two decades, Noise Hop had evolved, morphed, and experimented in many different ways. But still being an obscurity in the hip hop world, it struggled to become a significant movement. That is, until 2010, with Death Grip's debut mixtape X Military, clearing the lane for a whole new generation of Noise Hop artists. It goes, 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 it turns into a positive because that's why we end up expressing ourselves and then that comes to a place of like empowerment. You're in so many environments where you feel like you aren't able to be what you want to be or, or say what you want to say. So it's like in the arts, that's one of the great things about it I think is that that's where people can be a freak or do whatever they want, say whatever they want. I think we're into 
providing an environment where people, it kind of embraces chaotic, the chaotic elements of like uh, people's uh, personalities or lives or attitudes. And Plus you get to play really loud. Yeah, that's great. Following closely after, the LA trio, Clipping, released their debut album, Mid City, in 2013, showing that noise hop truly can be a way of showing listeners the limits of technology we use to both produce and consume music. Cleavers up, bring them here. Femurs all swing on the ceiling like a chandelier. She's standing there in a white dress, looking like she should get it. Licking the lips of the red, it should invest in the head clinic. He got a pocket full of incisors and pliers in a briefcase in case she get inspired. She ain't, she trying to suck face off the phone. You should know she is prone to swallow the marrow. She and the thing is, is we like mainstream rap. I mean, we want to not, we're trying to convince, not trying to convince anyone we're fixing it. We're just trying to like make space for other stuff that doesn't exclude it's not about like this is bad and this is good this is about this is also available we can also do this we're finding our our own way of contributing that's 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 um it's honest to who we are without trying to adopt personas or pretend we're anything other than we are we just want to be a part of this music that we love in the way that we feel like we can contribute as creative artists we all like really are into sort of club aesthetics into grittier sort of darker rap songs and gangster rap. I mean, we generally love gangster rap albums, you know, so, um, and they don't get made that much anymore. So, you know, when we have an opportunity to approach those themes from a way that feels okay for us to do, like we're going to do that.